This interview is from Chat City, Press and FM's mid-morning magazine show, live weekdays from 10 till noon. Now, on the 4th of August 1914, the people of Preston received news that war had been declared. Local newspapers printed explosive headlines stating this fact, and four years of hardship, uncertainty and loss followed. From recruitment and the PALS to uh, women joining the war effort in munitions factories, news from the front, rationing and eventually demobilisation, all written in a book which provides a valuable insight into the city's experience of one of the greatest events of the 20th century. The book I'm talking about is called Preston in the First World War and the author is with me in the studio right now and it's David Huggenson. So David, a very good morning to you. Hiya. And I'm, I'm sure you won't mind me just telling you, and, and I know I've just mentioned a little amusing story. As David <laughs> arrived at the studio, and, and I know Norma won't mind me telling this also, Norma rushed into the studio to tell <laughs> me he's a young guy, and she expected somebody writing about the First World War, of course, would be maybe um, in older years or elderly. <laughs> so is, yeah. it, is it a perception, do you think, that to write around the First World War, to be interested in the first war want us to be older i don't know about it being but uh, a complete utter perception but it's it's um when i was at the uh book signing last week uh i forgot the name of the gentleman but he says you know i thought you'd be a little older exactly what norma was saying and uh and chica said at the end uh i hope you need to get a paper around it maybe it is a perception but um it's, it's only the second time I've actually been said to me that I thought you'd be a little bit older. So. Yes. And the, uh, of course, the thing about the celebrations of the scenery, of the centenary, is, of course, that we shouldn't forget, is one of the messages, mm. and that young people should be aware of the history. So, how, how did the book come around? I mean, are you an author in life? I mean, have you published books previously, or is this the first book? This is my first book, so yeah, it's yeah. my, um, we commit what you could say, baby's you know, pride and joy, but um, I'm a teacher by trade, and this is, this entire thing has come about, um, well, I, only, I was only pointed out by the fact it's been a decade's worth of research, when I did the um, small piece for the LEP in last week's retro, and a, um, it came about, well, my very first inspiration was I did a, a work experience for my uh, degree, which is in Leeds for a long time. I did a work experience at the uh, Harris Museum and Art Gallery, and uh, Emma, who was the curator there, she was very, very kind and said, um, well, the only project I can think of is um, uh, setting up a database for all the uh, forms, because stickers on the uh, very large roll of honour, which is on the both, you know, split in two on those two staircases, you ha- uh, a relative or an employer, it's a long sort of story, this, but to keep it short, is um, he had to fill in his forms, and I, f- uh, I filled in his forms as part of a long database. And since then, I went on to do it as part of my dissertations, and I thought, well, what can I sort of do with it? And this is the end product. So prior to that, you'd not really known very much, or, you know, the First World War wasn't something that you had been kind of studying or interested in? Well, I've been interested in it for, like I said, for on and off for a number of years, but and I've researched it as part of my degrees, and I just thought, you know, with centenary coming around, what could I really sort of do with it rather than just just staying for something as part of a degree? So, how did you then go about it? I mean, you know, uh, how did you how did you plan the book first of all in your head before committing it to paper? Um, the, the first thing I did was to create um, my uh, my blog on my online side, and I, I did um, some small extracts in a, a free local magazine. And from then, it, the idea came up with: What if I'd made up a, a bigger, uh, a bigger idea or, or um, a bigger project where extracts from local sources, written by people at the time, and they just tell the story of, or as much as we can tell of of those war years? So I thought, well, I sent off some extracts to a couple of uh, local publishers, and the uh, Amberley they they liked it, and I said, well, we want to do it. So I, I wrote more of it. And, uh, edited it and got um, all the images for it and sent it to them and like six months later it's already in the, sh- in the shops which is quite exciting wow well I, i'm sure it must be and i mean during that research what were the things that kind of surprised you or the knowledge that you gained that you didn't know and maybe you sat back uh. and you thought wow <laughs> um i really don't know where to start with that there's um so many little poignant little stories i could certainly say but one of my personal favorites is um when um when, the, when there's like the rush of the colours when uh, Preston was swamped with servicemen during uh, I think it was August or September 1914, when the uh, enthusiasm for the war and everyone wanted to do enlist, Preston, with it being a barracks town, was swamped with thousands of recruits, and um, it was a, it was a problem nationwide. And 
it was, you know, where can you put these men? The barracks only had a limited amount of accommodation, so where can you put them? And one of the famous ones is um, the local community at the time. They responded to her by inviting these troops into their homes, you see. And one of the little quotes I've got um, is, uh, this is how she met her husband. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yes. So so stories like that. And, and <clears throat> I mean, for you, it must have brought it in, to some effect to live, you know, actually writing it. Yeah. Uh, what about a screenplay, maybe, from the book? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, my, my parents were joking with this uh, last night, but maybe you could just do it on a road tour or something, or a film. But, I don't know, the book has seemed to, seems to have um, getting a, a lot, of, lot of excitement and publicity recently. Um, but I just see it as something that's uh, very exciting, and it's just nice to have all, all uh, just go to one place to have all my work in... Um, in in one format, you see. So how does the book begin? Tell us, I mean, without, of course, uh, mm-hmm. giving too much away, because we want people <laughs> to buy the book, but t- take us through the contents of the book and what it covers. Um, the book itself uh, is aims to cover, um, well, obviously the 1914-1918 war years, but obviously the war continues afterwards. But I broke it down to, into six, well, six chapters, excluding the introduction of the postscript. I've got... The first chapter is the outbreak of war, which covers the obvious outbreak of the war, and as I mentioned about um, the troops and what what happens. Then you've got the um, the preparations at home and uh, how were uh, people responding to it. If I just flick up, because it's, I've got to remind myself here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Here we go. Your preparations at home as well. Uh, if looking like the very the very first page, it's about how businesses respond to it. So, so how how are they uh, helping their troops by? Uh, you know, there's always this promise of jobs when they came back. So there's a lot of uh, uh, a lot of quotes here now. In the next chapter, we've got what well, the work of war. So uh, probably one of my favourite chapters, where uh, you've got so many different stories of uh, like the, the you know, people working in the factories and how how a little uh, like local business has been taken over by uh, the, well, what was the war machine. And you've got news on the front line, which is letters. And there's a, a lovely little. Um, few extracts in there from a gentleman called um, Ord, and he was quite a famous lo- local person. I'm not going to go into too much detail, mm-hmm. but uh, him and his wife and some very lovely letters in there. And while you're away is how are people coping while other loved ones are away. And as um, if I recall off my head, there was some um, lovely extracts where uh, people as children are talking about how their, their, their mums are suffering, where they go, they go to a, they had an empty basket, so they go and join the big long queue because of all the rationing. And then she comes back with an empty basket because... There, there was just no food to get around. And then you got the coming homes, so what they did at the end of the war. And you got demobilisation, and then in the postscript, I mentioned about um, the memorials because all local memorials were happening obviously after the war. So that's probably it in a nutshell. Right. And as I say, you're a young guy, so I mean, on writing this book and on reflections and maybe thoughts about the war from uh, a young person's perspective, what what are your views about the First World War? What did you kind of think about it all? Um, I, I still think it's um, a fascinating subject, which certainly needs to be remembered. And, and um, with it being centenary this year, it's very, very important and important to get as much um, of, of these experiences um, out there for people to learn from. And um, my perspective of the actual entire war is is something very difficult to say. But um, in a nutshell. Uh, I think it's one of these famous quotes uh, I've, I've said before that hardly anybody was untouched by the actual war itself, whether it was um, the son or the brother or the grandfather, whoever it was who went to serve, whether they died or even they came back because, you know, they're also going to have some sort of experience to show mm. or a game before it was about the rationing or maybe they went and served in a, a local factory to help produce munitions. But then there's the overall thing and um, it's still there today, got the memorial, so it's, it's a fitting tribute. And what about, I mean, how long did it take you to uh, complete the book? And was research quite easy to undertake? <laughs> um, the research itself was probably quite easy to undertake because I've, uh, I've done it on and off for a number of years, so I know where the sources were. But um, when I was actually writing my, my master dissertation, which is the biggest chunk of this, one of the comments was, I used too many newspaper sources. And I thought, <laughs> I can't have a book on newspaper sources. <laughs> I thought, well, not only that would it bore the reader, it probably bore me as well. <laughs> So I went, in, uh, I went in search of what I could find, and um, I went to the obvious places. You've got the Harris Museum, you've got the Barracks Museum, you've got the local uh, record office, and they all got, give me some, um, you know, pointers of where to go. But most of it was just, um, I had a, like a few months off to, to write this. And um, I, 
maybe I researched it and wrote it at the same time because as you're reading through, you're looking for extracts and at the same time, you're trying to understand what's going on. So you're reading, you're writing, you're doing whatever you can and uh, eventually it just all came together. Right. And uh, Emma, who's a friend of ours at the museum, <laughs> has she read it yet? Uh, I'm not sure she has read it, but I know she said she has bought a copy. Yes, is that <laughs> yeah. right? I, thought she, yeah, I think she probably mentioned it on Twitter and she has um, mentioned it a couple of times on Twitter as well with the, uh, with the book sign and everything, yeah. Right. So how easy once you had completed it, given that this is the centre and of course, <laughs> there's lots of interest in the First World War. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I was watching something on BBC Two a couple of nights ago, which was absolutely fascinating. How easy was it to get it published? Um, I, I suppose this is one of the biggest things in, pub- in uh, being a first-time publisher is what where do you go? I, I thought about going on the lines of uh, self-publishing, mm. and there's, the problem with that is is the uh, initial cost of what to do with it, and then you think you've got a problem with having of all these books, then you've got to go and sell it. But um, it's something I thought about. But then um, I said before about how I sent, uh, I think it was maybe my first chapter, or what was a very rough chapter that, at that point in time, to various local um, publishers in Amberley. Uh, they really enjoyed it, and then uh, I sent them, a, a larger, larger piece of what I've written because I, when I, whenever I write something, I do it over a period of time and I come back to it. And so when they got it, I was just like, well, I, I, whenever I get a project, I'll put my teeth into a project. I just, I just go full whack. So for a few months after being told I got it, I, I, I kept writing. And then um, Emma, well, so she um, gave me uh, a good point of some new sources. There's a, an oral archive up at the University of Lanc- uh, Lancaster, I think it is. And that's where I got some of these very, very important quotes from that story I mentioned before about the empty basket. So the beauty of, of um, being able to write this and using um, uh, my local connections is that you get pointed in the direction of some really good sources. Right. So it just, just like snowballs, so to say. And uh, last week you had the launch date. How did that go? <laughs> did yeah. it feel quite strange? It, it, it did feel quite strange because you're, uh, you're also sat there and you're, um, you've got your pile of books right in front of you and like the first person who came up and, uh, and I signed it and um, I was like oh who do you want to sign for and you're like happy Father's Day it's like oh, it's, it's only up the road anyway for the same with um, Father's Day and then um, a couple more I signed a couple, like one one for the member of staff there for her father this is at Waterstones this was I think it was last Saturday yeah Saturday and um, a, a couple were just for uh, pe- what people walking past just local interest and um, uh, the people who probably got the books I, I only signed a few and I'm sure when they got home, they realised that um, when actually when I wrote Mum, I, I dated them. So when you look back in, in time, I think, oh, that's the date you signed it on. And I signed it the 25th. I thought, hang on. When I got back home, it's the 24th. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So all learning curve. So oh, and what's, what's the response been? As you said, you mentioned your parents. What's the, the response been from them to um, the book? Were they quite surprised? Yeah, the, I think... Um, every stage of this journey, they've, they've been very proud and they've been very, very pleased I'm with sure. me. I'm sure. Yeah. And um, they were actually, one of, one of, I think the entire family, my dad actually brought my nan down from Lancaster and they were all like the first people to uh, come and say hello to me in Waterstones. So it's not like it was kind of like a family event, so to speak. <laughs> Lovely. What a, what a brilliant feeling then. Yeah. So what's next then, David? What's, uh, what's to come? I mean, uh, have you got a taste for writing books, whether historical or well, whatever? Well, um as I go along, as I've, as I've been writing this, I have been running on my online side, which um, ha- it follows the same theme of the books. It's got extracts from various local sources. And there's um, a lot of my work in the Preston Pals is actually online. There's a whole um, series of letters from the Preston Pal which I've typed up and put online, and they're available as well. But one of, um, one of my uh, favourite sources I put online is the absent voter list, which is the list of all those who were absent voting around the 1919 period, and it's got like hundreds, tens of thousands of names on there. But um, I'm going to continually add into that. And um, with regards to writing second book, my dad goes, oh, what, when's your next book out? And um, I, I really don't know. The only thing I can really think of is if I do decide to go along the the, um, like, the book path would be to maybe write an extension where I put in some more sources. But when I wrote it, I think I exhausted as much as I could. And my other local, um, I've always got like something up my sleeve with regards to projects. Um, I'm volunteering uh, as much as I can with the Press and Remembrance projects, and they've got all sorts of lovely little stuff happening. I think the Redication... Yeah, yeah. tell us just a little bit. This is the one where they're looking at the... Um, around Preston, aren't they? And also yeah. uh, finding out more about the different war memorials around the city. Is that the right one? Yeah, well, the, well, the Press and Remembrance project is also... They, they got the funding from, that. I think it's the HLF, and... Um, They've got um, various amounts of money, and they've uh, 
from that money, they've created many little different projects. And one of their projects is, I think it's the Centre of Challenges, what it's called. That's the one. Yeah, and yes. th- they've got various local volunteers. And I've been to a few of the day, uh, through their training days, and they've got a whole variety of um, people, maybe going, back to, maybe going back to the age thing, I don't know. <laughs> right. But um, the idea is uh, they, they were, they're given certain wards, because Preston is put up into different wards, certainly voting wards. And the, uh, for example, I was given the the garrison area, but because I've been so busy, someone else has, has to help me with that. So um, the idea is they go and uh, collect all the information from the local memorials, take uh, notes of the preservation and the, the current state of them. And the idea is, the, the, the overall idea of the project is to find out what memorials are available and trying to create uh, a central place for where all the names can go. So and it's lies the First World War project is where all the details are actually going on there. But uh, that's not to say that it's going to take a little while to do. <laughs> right. And uh, did you mention to me there's a talk coming up that you're giving? Yeah, um, I have, I've got two talks. But one is certainly, uh, one's a sort of maybe depends on the level of interest. But one is happening at the at the Harris, uh, I've forgotten the exact day, but it's late in August. And it's actually on the work of the Preston Pals. So my idea is to tell the, the story as, or as much as I can in a certain amount of time by using letters of uh, Sergeant Rawcliffe. And it's those letters that are actually on the blog at the moment. So I'm going to use those to put it into context of what's happening and try and tell as much of the story as I can. And the other one is, depends on the level of interest, it's going to be, uh, um, uh, I, th- I think it's quite poignant. It's on um, Monday, the August the 4th, which is obviously the 100th years to the day of the beginning of the First World War, and it's going to be happening at the Town Hall. So if anybody is interested in actually doing that, they're more than welcome to contact me on the online, online side or in person, that's absolutely fine. Okay. Well, I was just going to ask, where can people buy the book? Yeah, the book itself is certainly available online at the, in, in, in the obvious places and certainly on the Amberley website. Um, but if you want to buy, like like me, you like to get go to the shop and get a physical book in your hand, you can actually get it from the Waterstones themselves. And I was walking past on the way here and they've still got a few covers available in the, in the window and on the shelves. But you can also get one. I know that Harris Museum did have some as well, but they've had to order some more in. And as far as I know, I think those are the only two sort of places you okay. can actually get a shop in in Preston. So, David, what's that like to walk past Waterstones <laughs> and see your book in the window? I just can't imagine what the feeling must be. Uh, well, the first time you see it, it's obviously quite exciting. and then um, but then A little blasé, <laughs> are we today? <laughs> yeah, a little blasé. But um, I, I think, I think the, the more speechless type of thing is when I walked into the um, book sign on the Saturday, and you've got, um, there's a, I, I, um, I've been placed against this pillar. I had my own, my own little desk and my own pile of books. And there was, um, uh, I think, a, an A4 sort of placard with um, like bullet points of the sources. But on the back of it was a, probably, as tall as me, a big, small, thin, red cardboard. And then it just had like, the name of the book, the author, and all the poignant things. And just thought, you know, it's, it's sort of, it is coming to sort of life now. And, and obviously being here and... and being given the opportunity or any opportunity to talk about President the First World War is always always right. it's always fun. <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure for us. So, uh, David, thanks for coming in this morning. So, it's Preston in the First World War, and uh, it's by David Hugginson, my first guest on Chat City this morning. Thanks for listening to our podcasts, but don't forget, Chat City is live weekdays from ten till noon on one hundred three point two Preston FM.